In part three of variable section sweeps, we saw how to drive dimensions in the sketch of the variable section sweep by using relations and a special parameter called tragpar. Let's say that you want to have the section changing shape, but you can't express it in terms of a mathematical expression. Variable section sweeps can also use something called datum graphs and a function called eval graph. Let's take a look at that. So I have my sweep here in the model and it's just a straight line trajectory to keep things simple. And the sweep is just a rectangle going along the length there. So essentially it looks like an extrude. If I want to use a, a graph to drive the sketch, let's go to the datum dropdown menu and choose graph. And as for name of the graph, you can call whatever you want. For the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to leave the default name. And now I'm placed into sketch mode. Your graph requires a coordinate system to establish the X and Y directions. And center lines aren't required, but I find them very helpful. So I'll put in a center line for the X axis and a center line for the Y axis. And another thing I like to do is drop a point to control the length of my feature. And that way I can dimension that right at the beginning. And let's say that, and let's use a value of 10 for the entire length of my graph. Remember that number 10 is going to come up again later. And to help in sketching, I also like to throw in some extra center lines. So let's throw in a center line for the extent of my graph. And then at this point, I can sketch whatever shape that I want. So I'm just going to make a few lines. Let's say I want it coming out straight, then at an angle, then come back down over here, then straight, then up. And just to make it interesting, let's throw a spline in here. There we go. So there we have our graph, a lot of different dimensions in here and again just for the sake of this demonstration I'm not going to change the different dimensions in here I just want to show you how I can use this graph that I created on the fly to drive the shape of my feature uh, and I will note that it looks like the peak value here looks like just to be over 3.24 or so and I'm going to show you how you can factor that into the shape of your graph as well so that is good. Let me hit the check mark to get out of here. And now in order to use this graph in the feature, it needs to appear before the sweep in the model tree. So I'll use drag to move it up. And let's edit definition of my variable section sweep. It's already set to have a variable section. Let's click the sketch button to go into sketch mode and I'll go to the Tools tab to go into my Relations. And the relation I'm going to drive in this one is going to be the height of this dimension. You can drive all your different dimensions by different graphs in here, but I'm just going to do this one. I'm going to say that SD3 is going to be equal to, and then we're going to use, oops, mistyped it, use this function called Eval Graph. And then let's do open parentheses. And the first argument that you're going to pass to eval graph is going to be the name of the graph in parentheses. So this is graph one and it's not case sensitive. So that's why I'm okay entering it in lowercase. And the second argument that I'm going to pass here are the X values that I want to extract from the graph. And this is where I'm going to use tragpar. And remember when I pointed out that I made the length of my graph along the x-axis a value of 10? Well, here's where I'm going to multiply by that value of 10. And also remember I saw that at the end the y value was about 3.24. Let's say I didn't want the dimension to be that high. If you wanted to put in any scaling factors, you could do that at this point, either multiply or divide, whatever. So let's say that I wanted to use half of the y value. I'll just put divided by 2 and then let's click OK and just the value uh, at the beginning of my sweep to value of 0 0.77 that means I must have had about 1.54 at the beginning of the graph. 
That's good. And let's go to the sketch tab, hit the check mark. And now you can see how I'm using that graph to drive the shape of my variable section sweep. Let's hit the check mark to complete that. And if you make any changes to your graph, let's edit definition. Keep the name the same. So in here, let's say I grab this and drag it up over here and maybe throw in a few fillets to round it off and hit the check mark. You'll notice that my variable section sweep updates with the regeneration so that we have those rounded sections in there now and it's a little flatter based on the manipulation of the graph. So again, you create a datum graph feature and then in the sweep, you write your relation using the eval graph function, passing on to it the name of the graph and also some expression involving tragpar. Let's take a look at a second example using the model I used in the tragpar video. So I used a sine function to drive the height of the feature in here. And that's how we got the wave sort of looking like the sun as it goes around here. Now I'm going to show something different where I am going to use eval graph and a datum graph to make more of a gear looking feature. So for this one, I am going to suppress this original sweep in here and I created a sketch. Let me edit definition and this sketch is offset. Let me make this a value I can remember. Let's make it point 0.1. Point 0.1 offset from the outside diameter of the feature and it goes over an arc length of 12 degrees and I'm going to use this as my trajectory for my new variable section sweep using a graph. And the graph is gonna have the shape of my gear tooth that I want along the length here. So let's create our datum graph first. I'll go to datum and then graph. And I'm gonna call this one tooth. And then again, you have to have a coordinate system to establish your X and Y axes. I'm going to throw in center lines for my x-axis and my y-axis. And I'm just going to make this simple by having the entire length of my feature a value of 1. Let me change this dimension to 1. And that way I can use this as a sketching reference. And again, to help me sketch, I can throw in another center line. All right. Now, the value of the dimension can't be a value of zero. That's why I, I offset my sketch for my trajectory a value of 0.1 from the diameter of the disk. So that way I'll just create horizontal line. Then maybe I want it to go up here and then across over here and then down over there and over here. Okay, that is good. Let's start dimensioning this. So I'm going to dimension this. Let's make this a value of 0.25. And this dimension I like. Let's change that to 0.25. And let's put in, let's see, this needs to be a value of 0.1. Let's put in our angular dimension. So from here to here, I want this to be close to vertical. Let's make this, I don't know, 80 degrees. And this one here from here to here. Let's make that 80 degrees. And I want the overall height of this to be 0.6. And lastly, to make this nice, let's throw, throw in some fillets on the corners. And let's make them equals and change this to, oops, get out of equal mode, change this to a value of 0.05. So that is good. That is going to be the shape of my tooth. Let's hit the check mark. And now I will create my variable section sweep. Click on the sweep button, make it variable, 
select my trajectory and let's go into the sketch I'm going to make it the width of the disk so I'm going to use my right mouse button to get to references and pick the other side and the shape is just going to be a rectangle and this will give me one dimension and initially let's say I have it a value of 0.1 but again I want it to be driven by the graph so let's go to the tools tab and then relations and this dimension over here for some reason the first dimension always tends to be SD3 uh, eval graph the name of my graph tooth and because the entire length of my graph was one I'm just going to use tragpar as the argument that I pass to it and I don't need any scaling of the graph so I will click OK and that's good for the sketch hit the check mark and there you see how I get this feature created in here all right I've got my tooth generated as a variable section sweep now I can take that tooth and pattern it and I'm going to change the pattern type to axis pattern and select the axis that I want to use and rather than specify the angle between the instances I can specify the angles extent and I can say that I want to generate 30 of these over 360 degrees hit the check mark and now I have my pattern of teeth created for my gear I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.